Okay, so we have an ab session today. I'll be honest with you, this is a lot of leg raises. Leg raises are effective, that's why we're doing them. Right. So I'm not going to give you any cookie cutter workouts, especially for abs, right? Uh, in general, we want to be doing any skills as the first exercise, right? There's no point us sitting there doing constant crunches or sit-ups or anything like that, because they don't, they, they do a little bit, but they're not really that great. So we want to be working, again, like I always say, the more range of motion you can do, just do that. Do whatever you can do, the greatest range of motion in. What's a crunch? You're moving slightly forward, not really doing much, right? So the skills we do at the beginning of the work, of any workout, can be classed as the compound movements if we're equating it to a weightlifting routine, right? We do those first. The hardest exercise will always come first. Right, so here we have the L sit or half lever. This is the first lever based exercise you'll be looking at here on my videos. It's the first one I've actually covered. So let's start with the easiest one, the half lever or L sit. You have something, it's a little bit different as we're doing an isometric hold instead of doing reps. You can put your legs just in and out if you really want to, so you can count repetitions that way, but we do this for a time, right? We hold this for time. I like to do a two minute total. So I'll show you all the variations here. Uh, and then you basically want to be doing four sets for 30 second holds on the hardest one you can do, right? If you can't hold 30 seconds, drop to a regression. Just regress the movement back to one you can hold for the rest of the time, okay? But we can also, as we're going, as we're going for time, you can also do eight sets of 15 seconds if you wanted to. The overall volume will be the same. The toes to bar, we have six reps for three sets. This will be hard, trust me, especially if you've done the L sits already. The oblique leg or knee raises, we have five reps each side, which makes 10 reps total for three sets. We have knee raises for eight repetitions for three sets total. Once that's all done, we mix it up a little bit here with an, another isometric hold. We started with an isometric hold with the L sits or half levers. Now we're finishing with isometric holds with plank variations. We're gonna be doing a standard plank here, just walk out push up position into a plank position. We'll be holding for between 30 to 60 seconds. Once we're done with the hold for the normal plank, we want to go into an oblique plank, which means we just go on one side on the arm and we hold ourselves up sideways, right? What you can also do is move your hips down or up to again lengthen and shorten the abdominal muscles throughout the movement. As well as the isometric hold, we can add in this repetition as well. 30 to 60 seconds on the normal plank holds and then another 30 to 60 seconds per side on the oblique holds as well. When I first started training calisthenics, I thought to myself, I don't have abs. If I can do these moves, I will have abs. I have to have abs. There is no way I will not have abs if I could hold my body in a horizontal line in the air. There's no way. Providing I have low enough body fat, of course, but that's for your diet. So instead of doing a allocated ab day or a session based around abs what i would suggest you do instead is try and work on progressions to front lever and back lever because the advanced tuck position where you have a flat back is putting a lot of strain on your abdominal muscles and your lower back as you've got to keep yourself in a horizontal line fighting gravity right so you want to be working towards those that's how you're really going to get abs this workout here is going through all the motions, which is basically repeatedly raising our legs. We're doing a lot of leg raises here. If you don't want to do leg raises, do progressions towards front and back levers, okay? They're not too hard. All you've got to do is hang on the bar and gradually bring yourself forward or back. Gradually. You don't have to do the full move at first. That's what I'm saying to you, okay? If you want abs, work on the front and back lever progressions, as well as this one, the L sit, the half lever. All levers will absolutely rip your abs trust me okay let's talk about equipment for the l sit or half lever it's going to be a much harder movement if you're on the floor with your hands because you have to press down you have to depress your scapula very hard you have to hold yourself up with your hands just flat on the floor okay if that's a bit hard for you if your scapula control's not there yet what i would advise doing is using some high bars some parallel bars dip bars are also called you can see my blue ones or you can use some low set parallel bars as well, which I'm, I've got some made out of wood. I just made them out of wood. Just two bits of two blocks each side and then and then a broom handle or something. You don't you can do it with pipes, you can make them out of anything, honestly. You can do them on books if you really wanted to. All we're trying to do 
is get that distance between your legs and the floor higher so we can actually hold the motion. You can do them on rings as well. I like doing them on rings because you have the added challenge of trying to stabilize yourself while you're in that position. So it's more for less, basically. You want to be saving time. You don't want to waste time on silly exercises that aren't going to get us very far. For example, the crunches, right? Don't bother with crunches. So with levers, the further away your legs get from the center of mass, the harder the movement's going to be. So you can see here, I'm going through different variations. We have partial one leg, partial two legs, full one leg, full two legs, partial both legs. There's so many different variations here that you can ease yourself into that full motion, okay? Just getting the legs further and further away as you progress. Pattern with the leg movements is also the same for front lever and back lever. All levers will share this pattern, that you move the legs in different progressions and you'll get a harder exercise. So as the, as the legs come further out, the harder it's going to be. Like I said again, you can do eight sets of 15 second holds. Whatever you're up to doing, okay? Just, just do them. If you want abs, do lever exercises. Right, and after the L sits or the half levers, you're going to have quite a hard time raising your legs. But we're doing more anyway. What did I say? There's a lot of leg raising in this workout. That's because it works, okay? That's how we do the full range of motion on the abs. We fully stretch them. And then we contract them, just like every other muscle I've talked about up to this point, all right? If you can't do a full leg raise, just do a knee raise. Just bring less of the weight away from the body, like you did with the L-sit. Like you do with front levers, like you do with back levers. It's all the same pattern. The more weight you have at the extremity, the harder the movement's going to be for you. If it's too hard, pull your legs in. Also, we have a few different parts of the abs. We have the superficial muscles on the outside, and then we have the deep muscles on the inside, they're deep, right? They're deep muscles. So how do we work those? You bring your hips, as you bring your knees up, bring your bum up as well. Bring the whole bring the whole bum up. Don't even sit, don't settle with just having a 90 degree angle between your legs and your torso, right? We wanna be doing, make the angle more acute. Just as much, as high as you can get on there. Just make the angle very small. That's how we get the deep muscles on the abs, right? That's where the actual strength is going to come from. The superficial ones will get worked as well, but the deep ones is what we want to focus on. So the toes to bar exercise is a tough one. The aim is to bring the toes to the bar as it's in the name. You don't have to do a full toe raise. You don't have to put your toes to the bar. You can bring your knees up high. You can do whatever you want, okay? Just make sure you're raising the legs. That's all we need to worry about, raising the legs. If you can get to the bar, great. Amazing, good job, you're strong. But we want to, wor we want to worry about the range of motion we want to worry about stretching and contracting the abs right so you can use knees you can use anything whatever's the best for you just do that right, we have the oblique variations of these knee raises or leg raises whatever one's hardest and you can do it now i like to do these on dip bars but you can do them hanging as well it's completely up to you whatever's more comfortable for you just do that do that variation of it again they're the same as the other leg raises we've been doing but we're adding a diagonal motion into this one to hit the obliques on the side right focus on bringing your hips up not just your legs we want to bring the hips up as well make the angle between your torso and your legs as acute as possible as small as you can get them up as high as you can if you want abs i would suggest you start working towards front and back lever progressions i'll do a video on that soon it's also available in my ebook you can see the legs extending the different variations the regressions and progressions so that all that information is there which will be in the description right if you really want to see picture examples of it now I will cover that later, but like I said, it's in the book already. So if you want to look at it now, go look at the book. It's free. But to finish this one off, I'll just give you a bit of a bit of advice I found over the years of training. Most people will tell you that more is better. They'd like you to spend an hour just doing your abs. Like I've done a session here. This is basically an hour an hour of ab workout, but we've got the skill progressions as well. We've got the L-sit. I've seen people who train three times a week for an hour of time. And because they focus on moves that give them more bang for their buck, that actually are worth their weight, they have a range of gains across many things because they're working big compound movements with their body weight, right? Like a front lever, a muscle up, handstand push up, all the squat variations. There's so much you can do and work towards with just a few select exercises rather than having to spend an hour just focusing on your abs. An ab 
the ab workout is an, is an accessory workout. It's not something you should be doing every week, right? If you really feel like you want to polish it up because you're competing or something, then sure. But progressing towards your front and back lever will give you the most ab gains. Trust me. If you can do the moves, you will have abs. So start working towards the moves that will guarantee you have abs with a, no, with a low enough body fat, of course. I'll be making a video about diet and nutrition soon. I've got loads on the way, honestly. I've got an arm workout ready. That'll be next. Uh, I've got shoulders. Uh, I'm about to film another chest one today for planche progressions. If you like the video, drop a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Probably be in about three days' time, okay? That'll be the schedule now, three days. It was two days before, but now I'm back to work. We're on a three-day schedule. Let's see if we can keep it up. I'm planning on it. Right, okay. Goodbye.